Welcome back to the video blog. I'm Adam Daniel Mze, dispatching from Belgrade in Serbia. I'm very hungover, so please forgive my slow, meandering, I don't know what you want to call it. Is it like a slur? A drawl? It's mumble speak? I'm speaking in mumbles. So, I had a really great night with some really young, what I consider to be 11, on, I call them 11 on 10 Serbs. They get a score of 11 on 10 from a guy like me for what I consider to be their extraordinary intelligence. I have found, like I have across most of Eastern Europe, most of the young kids are really, really, really talented beyond their wildest imaginations. I think if people really knew how deep the bench was, and to these guys I was describing what they know and what they can do to like a basketball team or a soccer team, You've got 11 on the pitch, but the bench strength is really deep in this country. Unfortunately, I learned from these same guys that uh, talent in and of itself is not really something that will take you far in Belgrade. Uh, talent alone is not the sole arbiter of whether or not somebody really has a chance to do well. And, of course, that's very sad to hear, but not surprising given where Serbia is, let's say, on the, um, on the development curve. What I wanted to talk about, though, was more what I consider to be when somebody uses what they know for potentially bad ends. Uh, I was talking to one guy last night, and I found him to be so extraordinarily smart. I mean, he had it all. I mean, the guy was stature. I mean, big guy. Uh, very, very, very well spoken in English. Almost, you could not tell that he was not a native speaker. But his explanations for things, for example, that happened during the war here in the former Yugoslavia kind of had me going home and then thinking more deeply about what he said. I don't want to get into specific examples because I have given my commitment to my friends here that especially those that are politically involved uh, not to use their names or use um, allusions to what they were talking about in case anybody wants to put the pieces together. Uh, but basically, uh, the situation is that the people here are so intelligent, I mean razor-sharp intelligent, um, so sharp that, you know, you don't even want to go near it because it'll cut you in two pieces. During the war, explanations about what people were or where they hailed from, going into, like, archives, like genealogy archives, and basically trying to piece apart strip by meticulous strip, who is a Croat, who is a Serb, who is a Macedonian, who is a Bosnian, and then the terribly convoluted way that the practitioners of the various ideologies, you know, be them Serb or Croat or Muslim, whatever the case was, used to wish away or explain away a lot of the things that they were doing historical arguments that n no one in the West, I think, has even heard of. Naturally, I'm sure some of these things can be corroborated to the extent that history can be corroborated, but this guy was, I mean, shocking me, and I'm a well-read person in history, shocking me with some of the things that he was saying. We talked a lot about how the Serbs are very closely connected to the Turks, whether they like to admit it or not, and how much of an influence Turkey or the Ottoman Empire had here on the Balkans, especially in Serbia. When you factor things like that into the mix, it kind of makes explaining who's a Serb and who a Croat, who's a Muslim, who's a Bosnian, totally impossible. I mean, if somebody can pull a historical factoid, or if somebody can pull some obscure detail out of the ether, and use that as like a crowbar with which to bludgeon one's opponents, either literally or in a discussion, I mean, that just goes to show you that there is no solution to a crisis in this part of the world. If somebody is so skilled at using his brains, but for ends that don't really have any tangible benefit other than just browbeating somebody into an intellectual corner, or worse, as we saw here in this country 15 years ago. It just got me thinking about who are we dealing with? And 
my first reaction is we're dealing with some very, very, very wildly, astonishingly, um, remarkably intelligent people that don't always want to use their intelligence for the things that intelligence can be used for. Uh, I'm not going to use the words dangerous or nefarious. I, I don't think they apply. You know, one man's dangerous is another man's effective. You know, one man's nefarious is another man's just. But just that thing that this guy was doing last night, and I'd sat there raptured, and I had 10 years on the guy, okay? I have 10 years on this guy, and he's talking, and I'm just like, wow. I mean, if that's the youth of today in Serbia, for instance, because I'm here now, I can't say anything about what's going on in Zagreb, but if that's the youth in Belgrade, we... You know, we we gotta we gotta be ready for that. I think the world should know who these people are. I mean, the the world should not deceive itself. You know that the that these people don't read their books and know their stuff. I mean, I, I don't know how that's really coming all together in this video blog, but that's what I was thinking about. And I don't know if anybody else has had this experience. And I'm sure tonight at our tweet up in Belgrade, I'm dispatching, of course, on June the 9th. I'm, I'm sure tonight we're gonna have a lot to say about things like that. So, thanks again for listening. Thanks for being there. Thanks for listening and contributing to the discussion and the great comments for, you know, what I've been doing for the last few days here. And I'll check in again tomorrow before I'm back to Prague. Take care. See you.